Wes here, and welcome to day seven of Shocktoberfest 2021. Sometimes seven can be a lucky number, and with the last two movies that I did a review on, this one might just put us back on track of where we need to be. Today we're going to be talking about Fritz Kirsch's adaptation of Stephen King's Children of the Corn from 1984. This one Definitely a classic. It spawned sequel upon sequel upon sequel all the way up into the 2010s. And who knows? We might get another one coming up in the future. Not sure. I haven't seen anything yet, but it's about time we're due for one, even though remakes are kind of blah, but rubble, rubble. So the story takes place in Gatlin, Nebraska, where a group of young kids are living out in the cornfields that are pretty much a cult. They believe in He Who Walks Behind the Rose, a supernatural being of pure, malevolent evil. And whenever a child gets to their 18th birthday, they have to be sacrificed to He Who Walks Behind the Rose because being an adult is not a good thing. While this is going on, at the beginning of the movie, one of the children knows a little too much, and the leader, Isaac, decides he's gotta go. While he's torturing him through the cornfield, he gets out, and a young couple by the names of Vicky and Bert Stanton are driving through town, Bert being a new physician, wanting to help people out, accidentally runs this kid over. Oof. Bad situation. So they're trying to figure out what's going on with all these young children running around with no parents, no adults. Well, there is one adult. Deal, or Dial. I'm trying to remember exactly how to pronounce his name. He's pretty much the man who runs the gas station in, around town in Gatlin, and he provides these children with gas and provisions, providing that he is spared. One of Isaac's right-hand people, or one right-hand children, Malachi, decides, you know what, I'm getting sick of this, I'm getting sick of Isaac getting a little too engulfed with his power. He kills Dial to pretty much assert some form of resistance or authority, Isaac's not very happy about this. He kills Malachi and needs a sacrifice. And he finds Vicky as his sacrifice to bring out he who walks behind the rose. He has a Bible, not necessarily a Bible that we all know of, but a Bible more of the dark world. And the only way to destroy this evil is to destroy the Bible. Well, Bert gets a chance to do that. And Isaac is dispelled for a time until the next movie, and 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 the next movie. But we'll talk about that at a different time. So I basically skimmed through this storyline because there's a good chance most of you have seen the original film. If you haven't, hey, it's the 80s. Go to your local video store and rent a copy because it is actually a rather good movie. Now it's time to talk about the things that I like and that I don't like about it. We're going to talk about what I don't like about it. There's not much that I don't like about this movie. I mean, it's it's very well written. I mean, Stephen King's original story is very, very straight to the point. I mean, it's basically about a bunch of kids that are living in this cult within the farmlands and killing each other off when they hit a certain age. I mean, there are a lot of stories that take place on this. And another thing about this is it's almost a, a nod to Children of the Damned which is another great movie from earlier on in the decades. And with this one, it's a little bit more, not necessarily supernatural from all the kids' perspectives, but more so Isaac's, and how he manipulates all these children to follow his word and follow the word of he who walks behind the rose. Moving on to this situation, what I like is the casting. I mean, the casting is very, very simple. Uh, I would say three of the people that have been very well off after this with their careers. Linda Hamilton be playing Vicky. She was hot off playing Sarah Connor in the 1984 original Terminator, and obviously her career went off pretty well after that, doing the TV series Beauty and the Beast. And, let's see, um, Peter Horton, I'm not sure exactly how many other films I've seen him in, but he does look rather familiar. John Franklin, who plays Isaac, an interesting character. Um, he was born with a defect that made him rather short. I'm trying to remember exactly what it is. There'll probably be a description on the video below me right now. However, he was able to do a lot with his career, playing character parts. Uh, he 
if I remember correctly, he was Cousin It in the 1990s Adams Family movies. He also went on to do a lot of theater professor work apart from that and has had a very established career outside of the industry. So going on that, I'm going to give it a very quick grade. To be honest, I'll give this one a solid A because it is a very structured story. It has a lot of interesting imagery, especially some of the special effects at that time. And I recommend that to anybody. I could watch that, I mean, not just, you know, once a year. I mean, I could watch it any time that I want because it is a very well-defined horror story. And Stephen King has had a lot of them under his belt. And I honestly think a lot of his shorter stories, especially, you know, when you think of a book like Different Seasons with like a, a novella where it had books like Apt Pupil, The Body, which is later be uh, made Stand By Me, Shawshank Redemption. I mean, those stories tend to become better, or not better as movies, but I mean, better adapted, I'd like to think. So that's my take on it. Other than that, we hope you enjoyed this quick review. Make sure you leave a thumbs up. Leave a thumbs down if you didn't agree with some of the things I said. Be sure that you share on social media. And as always, trick-or-treaters, push that red button. Give me a treat this year, not a trick. And as always, ring that bell for instant notifications. And you know what? I'm looking forward to it. We're almost getting to that double digits. Three more. Three more for that. And I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you are too. Apart from that, I'm Wildman Wes, and we'll see you tomorrow for day eight of Shocktoberfest 2021. Take care, stay tuned, and stay scared.